All right, so I thought I'd do a quick video on the uh, clutch assembly here with my 47 Hudson. Um, this will probably be a little longer video than normal because this is a little more stuff going on here. So anyways, I got this all cleaned off, off the flywheel there. Uh, there's this, this is there's no metal on metal, so this is all nice and smooth, nice and clean. You might see some scuff marks here from the scotch bright, but I was just doing that to get the gasket off. It was all clean. It does have nice little guide pins here and at the bottom for the gasket and for when I go put the cover back on. Here's the new, uh, they're calling this the drive, I'm sorry, they're calling this the pressure plate. And this thing right here is the drive plate on the bottom of the assembly, right? Of the housing assembly. Uh, I did not take this apart. All the springs in there are well sprung. Um, this surface right here is really nice. There's no, there's, I can't catch my fingernail on it, so I'm guessing that's good. I clean that off. It looks like there's grooves rubbed in here, but there's not. That's just from the court rub, rubbing the metal, I'm guessing. So that's all good. I'm all squeezed in the car because it's raining outside, and I'm not in my garage because I have a 51 Hudson in my garage. So I'm doing something in your driveway right now. So hopefully you guys can hear it okay over the raindrops. Anyways, cover assembly, pressure plate, drive plate, according to the manual, and flywheel. Now the way this works, for you guys who don't know, from what I can tell, this little, uh, I don't know if it's a thrust bearing or whatever you want to call it, is on here. There's an oil seal on the bottom right here that will mate into the cover assembly. When that is on here, you will engage the clutch. Let me turn the knob here. Uh, these little tines. There's little, let me see, uh, little tines at the bottom there. We'll move here. Let me move, let me move that for you. So the tines will move up. Whoop, whoop. There's little spots right in the back of this where they make contact. It only goes on one way. And so when you push the, the, the pedal or the clutch in, let me move now. It moves that up. All right, so. All right, and I like grease and stuff. I just like to have grease and splines when I go together with stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's how I do it. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to try to stab this thing on here and uh, see if there's anything I catch. Oh, one more thing. So these square blocks right here and these guide pins will only line up in one spot, this square block and this guide pin here. So it will only go on one way uh, when you put it on. So if it's, if it's, if it's a force in it, if there's a problem... It's because you don't have it on right. You can't put, even though there's, a, there's two guide pins, there's one here and there's one at the top here. You can see that the square, the square piece does not, does not line up properly with this guide pin like it does down here. So that right here will go right there. All right, cool. Let's put this thing on and see how it goes. Okay, so this is what the cover installed. Of course, the, uh, the clutch plate and drive plate are on the inside of that now. Uh, you can kind of see the... And in there, and the splines uh, that are going to be on here eventually. Uh, I just got stabbed real quick. Um, so uh, the manual was very uh, specific about making sure that when you tighten these bolts, you do opposite sides and crisscross instead of going around the outside of the, uh, the hub assembly when you tighten these. Now, those guys that don't know me, I am an aircraft mechanic by, by trade. And aircraft mechanics, we know everything we do is always from side to side. I don't know if that's the same thing for auto mechanics or not, but whenever I see something circular like this, it needs to be pressed on because uh, it is a really tight fit. You can see there's like a gap right there where the, you can see the gasket in here. So it needs to be crisscross when you tighten these bolts according to the manual as well as just good practice. Okay, so I got all the bolts on the cover all torqued down. Uh, and basically what I'm going to do, I'm just going to muscle this. Uh, I'm a big dude, so I'm not going to do the right thing, get a couple of jacks and jack stands out. I'm just going to muscle the crap out of this thing and see if I can't line it up properly. If that doesn't work, I'll let you know. Um, I thought I'd go over real quick what I did do to take it out. Um, I don't think I discussed that in any of the other videos. Basically, just dropped the starter. It's still hanging down there by the wires, which is the right thing to do. I have a jack under the engine over there. So the engine is sitting up a little higher than normal. I mean, you can kind of see the firewall. Uh, oh, someone must have bent that at some point. Anyways, firewall's there. You know what, it's probably me when I put this engine in here because this engine comes from a different car. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick this up. This transmission actually isn't terribly heavy as far as transmissions go. Uh, it's, it's definitely not as heavy as the one I have in my 51. The 51 is probably a good 15 to 20 pounds heavier, but this one's actually not, not too bad because it's not really that big. So I'm going to move the, uh, the uh, drive shaft out of the way a little bit, and I'm just going to try to muscle this thing on here, and then hopefully just line it up and bolt it in, and uh, 
we'll test it out, see how it goes. I might even have you guys along live as I, as I do it. So, again, uh, yeah, start muscling this thing, cussing and swearing, see if I can't get it lined up and hooked up, and then I'll be back.